I listened to a podcast on BBC, and Bruno Squark was there talking about how groups of people manipulate this market. So first about ICOs, that they're, you know, there's a, they're scam, there's del disillusional people who will never make anything, and there's good, good teams, but also what happens to the valuation of the token and how is that being manipulated. And he had a fantastic talk about it, so I asked him to come to the stage and to basically deliver that, uh, deliver that presentation. He won this morning. He was participating in the blockchain for dummies, and he won. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah, he, he does for fun. Yeah, no, 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 no. That was that is manipulation. If you, as an expert, are going in, in the blockchain for dummies and get all the bunch of uh, books, but in his uh, free time, he does. Uh, he, he really makes projects. He is an Ethereum developer, and he knows everything. And this afternoon, in the technical track, he will talk about the top ten, top ten blockchains, and where they are and where they're going. But first, tell us what happens in this whole ICO world, uh, Bruno, because it's fascinating. <laughs> Applause. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, my name is Bruno Schwartz, and as Vincent said, I will be talking about ICOs. Why? Because I spend a good deal of time investigating them for fraud, them and their founders, and following the trail of their um, either disillusions or thefts and escapes. Um, I run Bitfalls.com, which is a technical education portal that does security audits and digital forensics and so on and so forth. <coughs> but let's, uh, let's just dive right into it. And um, first of all, I would like to thank the previous speaker for revealing all the secrets of my consultancy business, basically convincing businesses that they don't need a blockchain. So that's all I do in my consultancy time. So many CIOs, so many CTOs ask, what can we do with the blockchain? I say probably nothing useful. Um, that's a wake-up call that they all need. So uh, right now, there's the site DappRadar Dapp is a site where you register your decentralized application for kind of promotion and to make it uh, known in a directory. And right now, there are about 515 dApps registered and 1,000 estimated total, um, counting the experimental ones and the ones that's deployed for fun and so on. Um, there's there was 700 public tokens launched in 2017, not counting the ones that you get as spam to your address, so actual tokens that ended up on CoinMarketCap and similar websites. 100,000 new active Ethereum addresses appear on the network every day, and up to a million transactions per day are transferred, and that's only because of the network that is uh, currently too slow to handle this. Over $7.5 billion were raised in ICOs, up until now in 2018. For comparison, the entirety of 2017 was 5.5 billion. So where does it all go? How can this much money be created out of thin air? That's exactly it. It's thin air. It's mostly an illusion. You have Telegram, which covers almost half of this, 3 billion in an ICO, which never happened, which was actually all completely private sales. The rest is private sales where investors come in to a team early and give a big offer for investment, they get a big bonus on the tokens, they essentially put in some money that they want to get rid of, they get tokens back, and later they turn them back into money for a profit, and the rest of the money went to other ICOs, there was this dragon chain that got 300 million, if I'm not mistaken, and so on and so forth. So, in the past, these ICOs were the process of creating an, IP, uh, an ICO was creating a white paper, a website, gathering a team, creating a Bitcoin talk forum announcement, talking about it, answering questions on social media, Telegram, Discord, and so on, organically growing based on people's interest. And it was good for both scams and legit projects because not many people questioned their motives and everybody was just shooting for the moon and hoping for Lambos and big gains. This was the nice era of ICOs, very fruitful and most ICOs are now dead. You can see the dead coins on deadcoins.com. There's quite a few, and quite a few are still missing, but these coins are effectively dead in terms of development, in terms of activity on GitHub, on their repositories, or even their network transaction levels. Currently, there are a dime a dozen ICOs, like Vincent said, everybody's creating them out of templates and um, just by clicking a few buttons. They are powered by clueless advisors and shills. You can pay John McAfee five Bitcoin to tweet about your project on Twitter, and you're almost guaranteed a pump in price right now. Not so much anymore because his reputation fell even lower than it was before. 
there's no info on the project after the ICO. Projects seem to ignore their uh, investors like bad Kickstarter projects. And there's no product post ICO. For example, Filecoin was sold out in seconds for millions and it still has no project. It's still a basically a PowerPoint. While Sia Coin, which had no marketing, no shilling, and launched around four years ago, has a working product and has had it since then. That's a file hosting solution for the blockchain. And the modern ICOs will be in trouble with the SEC because a lot of them are classified as securities. Now, most of them don't need a blockchain, like we've already said. These are problems that can be solved with a good database and an optimized system. So they also, uh, and they fall victim to uh, two of the following cases most of the time. One is that they lock their tokens for a vesting period. They don't release them all at once. So there is no way for whales to get them all at once and dump them. And this prevents whales from investing. Thus, the ICO misses their soft cap and has to refund all the investments so far. That's obviously not very good for the ICO. The other way is they release the tokens all at once and fall victim to pump and dump schemes and token flipping, where people who got a, lot, a big bonus for investing early sell them at market price when the ICO pr uh, project launches, and then they crash the value of the token, again, ruining the project. That is the fate of most ICOs today, unfortunately. So the current ICOs are in an era of fail. Successful, good, high-quality ICOs are very much a rarity. And they are mainly money laundering inst instruments through these private sales where people obtained Ethereum, uh, Ether or Bitcoin through illegal means and need to launder it through tokens, then through Monero, then through Bitcoin and out into fiat. They lost trust of community. And so the community demanded more control. With that in mind, the DICO was proposed by Vitalik Buterin, the founder of, it of Ethereum. And the DICO is basically a decentralized autonomous ICO where control over dispersion of funds is given to the investors. So they will be judging on the roadmap and the milestones in the roadmap and decide whether or not the team is allowed to withdraw that amount of Ether at that point in time. If they're not happy with the progress, then the team cannot withdraw the money. So this kind of gives control back to the investors. However, a DICO can be very, very dangerous because people are generally stupid. Uh, they are very susceptible to media attacks. They are very susceptible to influencers. They can be uh, kind of persuaded to vote a certain way, and the team is therefore one vote away from failure or partial failure or a significant delay at all times. So only very confident, high-quality projects can pull this off who have control over media, who ca have control over influence, technology, and every aspect of their projects, which I would say is very good because only such projects should survive in this space. Um, a couple of guidelines. I'm kind of running out of time, so I'll rush through this. So if you're launching a token, it's important to be honest and transparent about why you need the blockchain and whether you need it. If you don't need it, then uh, say that you don't need it and that it, you just need the money. That's fine. Companies do it all the time. It's called going public. They issue their shares. People buy shares and give them money. They don't do anything else beside that. Have a bribing budget ready. Unfortunately, most web portals now need bribes to even mention your project somewhere. That's the sad reality until uh, Facebook, Google, and similar platforms remove their ad ban. Um, they've done this. They've created this cartel of uh, bribed media. Ignore popular advisors. Uh, ICO Bench, uh, for example, is a website which lists popular advisors for uh, various for ICOs, and then these advisors will often approach your team, ask for a bribe of 20 to 25 Ether, and uh, allow you to put their face on your project's team page, which, again, won't help you at all. I know from experience several projects that I've been advising on, actual advising, have had bad experiences with those. Get security audits, get verified on Ether scan, establish trust with your community. Um, source code is important. People need to be able to see the, your project's source code if they are to trust it. There have been many backdoors in tokens. Whoever owns ERC-20 tokens, you probably don't know that the transfer function of your token can have a backdoor in it, which allows the owner of the token to just take the tokens from you, regardless if you're online or offline. Um, I can explain this later if you find me in the hallway. It's very easy to do. We can build a token here in 10 minutes, and I can show you how I can steal it back from you after I send it to you. Either go all in on blockchain or not at all, say that you need the money or say that you need the blockchain for something, but then be ready to answer hard-hitting questions about why you need the blockchain. And consider a DICO for full trust. So there's some, if you're launching a blockchain, just focus on technology, list advantages, list the full team, do not be secret, have no hidden members, 
do not have hidden advisors, do not have to be announced members and so on. Just be fully transparent and you'll probably do well. Credit all code, do not steal code like Tron did. Do not steal white papers like Tron did. Do not copycat without attributing because a lot of people are watching and you will be discovered. Uh, get technical advisors of all levels. This results in good user experience. You need people to explain to other people why this project will be useful and how it will be used. Just launching a project doesn't help anyone because there's no good user experience in blockchain right now. Uh, so general do's and don'ts. Uh, you can ask me later about it. It's the, the red light is blinking at me. Um, so if you're considering investing, poke around, make sure they're honest and transparent. Um, check the team or hire someone to do that. So we do a lot of this investigation. We investigate the members. We found a lot of websites which sell aged Facebook and LinkedIn accounts that have been in development for five years or more with unique photos that are only available on those profiles. These are false identities created in advance, years in advance, for the express purpose of imitating someone else who doesn't exist. These people often end up on team pages of various ICO projects, and you need to be very, very careful when looking at them because they do seem real, but when you try to get in touch with them, they fall apart. This is what we often do. And to check their security audits, hire someone to do a security audit, um, yada, yada. Uh, the lesson is they probably, you probably don't need a blockchain if you're launching an ICO, but you might need the ICO to get money for your project, and that's fine. The most important part is being honest about it and not trying to deceive your investors just for money. Um, thank you. Yeah, Bruno, I'm so sorry. I mean, you deserve an hour. You deserve an hour. I mean, we, we want to you know, have a balance between warning people and telling them you know, how much. It's a really an interesting gamification, right? You, you write <laughs> a paper, and then some technology starts, and suddenly people can create money, and then everything which can go bad, and which is greed, which greed people yep. can come up, they can be stupid, they can be dishonest, they can be delusional, they can just be very instrumental in just making money by fooling everybody else. Everything happens there, and it happens so quick. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's and true. you did a fantastic job analyzing. He made a, where was the poster? I just Googled pump and dump anatomy. It's going to be the first result. It's on bitfalls.com, um, and it's, it's on everywhere. my Twitter yeah. uh, pinned. So where can I get information I can trust. Because I mean, I, I will not do that. I mean, people want to have a smart, uh, want to have an app and say, uh, it's trusted information, oh, it sounds good, do. Uh, I mean, where can I find that? Uh, there is no easy answer to this. Good. Uh, so you there is an opportunity. There's, a te there's an, oppo an opportunity, just like the financial industry. The, the financial industry is also constantly busy yep. trying to find out what's real, what's not real, and they have financial analysts, and some of them are, have a Chinese wall, and some of them have a little bit less than a Chinese wall, but d d d exactly. is that, oh, do you see that starting? Uh, I do. I mean, it's already started. There have been many sites trying to kind of legitimize or just declare legit some ICOs, but even those have fallen prey to greed and now have tokenized their own service <laughs> uh, so that you buy their tokens and then you have access to their analyses. And again, you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Who pay them how much to be listed there as, as a positive ICO and so on. So, this whole so thing. what you need to do is find someone you trust and stick with them until they betray you. <laughs> Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.